Um, where is Nicole? Nicole needs some privileges. Okay. Saying it's going to make you the host, not like a co host. Let's see what happens. Hopefully, it'll still let me record and let people in. You muted yourself. Fingers crossed. Okay. Change host in the cold lady. Yes. All right. So it still looks like it's recording, but you may have to let people in. Okay. I might be useless for a while. Just let two in. Oh, we got a full house tonight. That's good. I mean, I, like good. I said, tried to put it on the board. And Kaylee's here if we want to pick on Kaylee for eating chicken tender batter for dinner. Kaylee, we have to have a chat, sis. Um, where is my, there it is. All right, while you're searching, I'll say hi to everybody and let it, pass it on to you. Oh. Yes, <laughs> Zach is correct. All right, welcome everybody. It's Sunday, getting ready for state championships the next couple weekends. So Nicole's going to go over something that resembles a little bit prior to our Auburn trip, maybe even some key things that came from our November uh, meeting that we're talking about um, going into high school state. So, you know, this time around versus Auburn, you've got a lot more control over your food choices going out, what you pack, what you bring with you what makes it to the meat, what you have on the pool deck. So, and then again, always looking for feedback, responses from your side, what's working, what's not working. Are you successful? Have you successfully tried something? Are you still struggling to accommodate uh, new nutrition patterns, things like that? So the more that you offer, the more that she can respond to and the more we can help. So it was Nicole's meeting and it's now it's in her hands. Hey guys, we are getting a lot of comments of shots fired at Kaylee about kids' names and canes, but we'll talk about that later. So like Ross said, we're going to go through some stuff that we've already spoken about in the past. We're just going to reiterate it, um, hopefully go into a little bit more detail. Um, at the end, I do want to hear from y'all as far as we've had a couple of away meets that I know y'all have traveled to. Um, so if we can kind of hear from what changed with some of you if you've done something or implemented something that maybe we've talked about um, and it's worked or maybe you haven't implemented something but you're starting to notice like I did have canes before my meet and it really sucked so we can talk through some of those things but I do want to get you a little bit involved um, in the conversation after after the presentation so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen share screen here we go um, I'm gonna have the chat up, but anybody just pipe in if there's something. If not, I'll take a peek at it at the end. Okay, let's start from the beginning. Let's do this. Okay, state championship nutrition conversation. Here we go. So the agenda today, we're gonna talk about packing, um, packing meals and snacks for travel days. If y'all are, you know, I know you're driving, um, and then packing for the pool deck, part, packing for competition, where you're staying, what that needs to look like, talking about meals, specifically breakfast, because that's going to be something that you need to take in before you get to the meet, which is really, really, really important because you have really long days this coming weekend. Um, and you want to make sure you start your day correctly. So we're going to go through breakfast and suggestions of breakfast, and we'll go through um, lunch and dinner. I know lunch and dinner some of those may be at restaurants. So we'll go through some restaurant options and then we'll talk about the actual meet, the actual competition when you're at the pool and what that should look like as far as you taking a little bit more control over your nutrition. I know y'all are teenagers. Someone probably has to take you to the store. Some of you may not drive yet, may not have the complete option to do this completely on your own, but you do have the resources to have someone help you and you need to be in control as far as you can't just show up. 
Um, if you have in the past and it's worked and it's been fine, let's take it to the next level and really put yourself in a good position to set yourself up for success by making some better choices. Um, you may not think you're going to feel the difference and you may not be aware of the difference, but I promise you, if you can start taking some of these tools and tips into action, it will make a huge difference. Okay, so we're going to talk about packing, travel, and at the pool, because I know they're going to be a little bit different for the time spent in the car and then the time spent while you're there. So we want to talk about your snacks and your meals, and we're going to talk about your hydration specifically. I will never not drill home to your, your hydration. So travel no-nos, what you should be packing and what you should not be packing. Do not rely on gas stations. I know it's an easy, quick stop. Some of us my husband included, when we go on road trips, the first thing he's excited about is stopping at a gas station, getting snacks we don't typically keep in the house. This is not the time for you to stop at the gas station and grab the honey bun or grab the Sour Patch Kids or special chips that you don't usually have at the house. So really do not rely on gas station snacks. Do not assume that you do not need the snacks. Even if you don't feel like you're hungry, I've told y'all this before, we want to be eating every three to four hours in between meals, in between snacks. You don't want to go into this weekend under fueled and hungry. You can't really catch up with your hunger. You can't really catch up with your hydration. So packing them, having them in the car, making sure you stay on top of your hunger is going to be really important. No added or fake sugars. We've had a slide in the past where we went really in depth about what fake sugars are, what natural sugars are, where, what foods are sneaky traps for added sugars, like things that are branded really healthy, like some protein bars or granola bars. So we really want to avoid the added and fake sugars. Those are the things that give us that peak increase in our energy levels and then that quick crash. We don't want to have a ton of, you don't want to hype yourself up on all these sugary snacks like candy, cookies, um, things that you can find at a gas station or a convenience store that's going to pump you up. You're going to crash if you eat it too soon before you go to sleep before the night of your meet or the morning before you eat your competition. You just don't need that cycling through your body. It's really going to put you on the downhill and you really want to keep yourself peaked and primed. No sodas and soft drinks. We want to really focus on your water consumption. Some of that water and hydration may come from sparkling waters like LaCroix, Topo Chico's, Pellegrino's. Those things are okay. We don't want it to be the majority of your hydration. We want primarily to take it just H2O. If you are bringing or you know that you've been doing some of those hydration packets, make sure you pack them, but do not load up on soft drinks and sodas from drive throughs from gas stations. Don't even pack them in the car. Avoid the caffeine. Um, I know we've talked about some of y'all have wanted to dabble in the pre-workouts. Some of y'all want to stop through Starbucks and coffees and this and that. And if that's something you're doing day to day, this is not the weekend to do it. It's There's no need for y'all to be taking in the added sugars, the added caffeines. You don't want that sugar crash. The caffeine can add jitters, give you a little bit of a shake if y'all have felt that, if you've experienced that high, high caffeine rush or that rush from a pre-workout. It gives you a little bit of a jittery shake. You may get some tingliness through your arms. Um, it also really can upset your GI intestines and mess up your bathroom habits. So it's just not, you don't wanna have to worry about any of that. I know y'all are going into a weekend where the days are long. So if you can avoid putting the things in your body that can really have any stomach damage or wreak any havoc on your gut health, we want to really avoid it. Caffeine being one of those interrupters. Travel yes pleases. So these are some of the things that we want to focus on when packing and what to think about. Plan to load up on healthy snacks at home. So packing those snacks. Going through in your head, maybe making a list to give to your parents, to give to whoever's helping you get to these meats or get to sulfur this weekend. What are you eating right now before meats? What are you eating throughout your day? What is your body accustomed to, used to? You know 
that it doesn't make you feel bad. It doesn't give you an upset stomach. It doesn't cause any bloating or digestion issues. Pack those. We do not want to rely on the concession stand. We do not want to rely on the gas station. So packing these ahead of time is going to maybe take the extra step for you to take advantage and take a little bit of control over these things. Pack an extra ice chest for refrigerated snacks. So let's say one of your go-to snacks is a protein shake or a Greek yogurt or something that you typically keep at home in the refrigerator. That may mean packing an extra ice chest for the car. Um, Ross has told me that you guys will have your parents or someone there with you during the weekend. So if they can keep that ice chest for you, if it's something that you know you need to keep refrigerated, like fruit or something like the protein shake, something like the yogurt, pack the extra ice chest. Make your snacks if needed. I know I've given y'all a couple recipes like the peanut butter balls, the muffins, the pancakes. If you've started implementing or trying some of those and you really like them, then maybe this week, take a night, take an afternoon after school and make some of these snacks. And so that they're in the house, they're ready to roll and you can take them with you. And we don't, again, need to rely on things that you need to grab out of the store, um, grab out of the gas station, grab out of a convenience store. Eat the snacks. I mentioned on the last slide, you have to stay on top of your hunger. You do not want to get to the pool deck. You, not, you do not want to get to the weekend and just feel ravenous. You want to be satiated. You want to have the protein in your body. You want those slow burning complex carbs that we've talked about already in the system, your metabolism and your body and already is functioning through them so that they're going to be helpful to you. Um, so eat them. Hydration, pack your hydration. Again, it's not an option. I've posted slides on the Instagram page about it. We've talked about it. I think we've had a whole presentation on just hydration. It's not an option. You'll have to be taking in your water. Again, pack the ice, extra ice chest. There's no reason for you to not have it on you or with you. So that car ride, keep drinking your water. If that means an extra potty break along the way, that's okay. The rule of thumb, one ounce per body weight. The general rule of thumb is half to one whole ounce of liquid per your body weight. I tell y'all one ounce because of the energy you guys are putting out and the sweat loss and y'all's age and your metabolism, one ounce per body weight. So that math equation, it's one to one. It's if you weigh 120 pounds, you're taking in 120 ounces. Everybody get that? We want to take it in. If you're not used to it, start tonight. I have my water right here. Can't stop, won't stop. You need to be taken in the water 100% all the time. Again, some of it can be sparkling water. We've talked about, I know some of y'all like the LaCroix and the Pellegrinos and those things and you want to switch it up and that's fine. We just want the majority of your ounces to come from just water. Start hydrating now. We can't catch up just like you're hungry. You want to stay on top of it. Um, dehydration can happen quickly. It can cause headaches, especially when you are, I know the breathing is really important with swimming. And when you're breathing that rate and you're taking those breaths and you want to make sure that you're staying on top of it, headaches, you can be prone to headaches and hydration is going to really fight that. Okay. Let's go into your meals. Breakfast is going to be super, super important because that's going to set the tone for your day. And you need to be eating it beforehand, whether you're staying in a hotel whether you're staying in a place where you can make your breakfast, whatever that looks like, let's go through some options and what that's you want that breakfast to be made up of. We've talked about our macros. You, you want a complex, slow burning carb. We've talked about complex carbs versus simple carbs. The simple carbs is like putting a twig on a fire. A, a complex, slow burning carb is like putting a log on the fire. It's going to burn slower. It's going to keep that fire, that energy burning longer. You have a long day. Your energy is going to be used up very quickly in the pool. Having a complex, slow burning carb is going to be really, really, really important to start your day with. You want about 45% of your day consuming these complex carbs. Healthy fats because that's, we're gonna go into why, but we want a healthy fat on your plate. And then of course we always want your protein. What does that look like? An example of a breakfast like this, this can kind of cover whether you're in a hotel and you have just a microwave, 
um, or some kind of continental breakfast in the lobby. Or if you have a house and a kitchen, you can really, you're going to the grocery store and you can make a breakfast. So oatmeal is one of my favorite morning or snack complex carbs, slow burning, natural, multi-grain carb. Um, and you can get those packaged. You can put hot water. You can just nuke it in the microwave. It's really easy to take with you. Oatmeal is going to be great. A whole wheat, multi-grain toast, bagel, bread, something like that. Um, and fruit, apples, bananas, berries, strawberries, any kind of fruit are going to be great long lasting carb sources as well. A healthy fat example will be avocado, eggs, peanut butter, almond butter, any of those nut butters. Those are all going to be great healthy fat options. They will go into the next slide. We'll do is a great way to take up a lot of calories, give you a lot of energy without feeling too heavy on your stomach. If you are one that has trouble eating too much before you get in the pool. Protein source, eggs again. I put eggs under healthy fat and protein because an egg is healthy fats with the yolk. Great protein source with the white. So together they can kind of check both boxes. Um, that's if you are in the situation this weekend where you have an option to have eggs. Most grocery stores will have an option to buy already hard boiled eggs also. Protein shake, again, throw it in the ice chest, buy them warm or room temperature and put them in the fridge, the mini fridge at the hotel room. Those are gonna be really easy. Those are also gonna be a great snack that we can pack and take to the pool. Make a smoothie. Um, I know a lot of y'all love you some Smoothie King. Um, if you can find a Smoothie King in town, buy yourself a Smoothie King. Remember, we wanna keep it skinny, meaning not skinny, it's avoiding the calories, it's skinny because it has taken out that turbinado, which is that fake added sugar. Um, so those are all going to be great options for you to start your day with to make sure you're checking all your boxes. Why? Why do we need all those three things? The complex slow burning carbs, it's going to be your energy. It's going to be long lasting. We want it to last you until your next snack. And that may mean you're probably getting in the pool after lunch before your next snack. So we want to make sure we have something that's going to last healthy fats. It's a secondary energy source. It's high calorie. Fats have a higher calorie count in your carbs and your protein, but it's low weight on your stomach. So things like peanut butter, avocado, eggs, they aren't super filling, but they pack a caloric punch and an energy punch. So if you are one that struggles with eating too much in the morning, that's something, the healthy fats is going to be something that you can handle. That's not going to feel too filling, but you're making sure you're getting enough enough carbs, I mean, enough calories. And your protein, that's gonna reduce your hunger. Like I said, you're probably gonna have breakfast. You may have a warm up swim. You may have an event. You may have some time in the pool before your next snack, um, before lunchtime. So having a good protein source, protein reduces your hunger. It keeps you feeling fuller for longer. And it also sends energy, muscle repair, fuel, and rebuild to your muscle sources. So this is a great, this is something you need to really work on checking these boxes the first thing in the morning before y'all head out. Um, even if that means, I know if some of you all like your sleep in the morning and you're down to the wire, just giving yourself enough time to get change and get out the door, it's time to start waking up a little bit earlier, giving yourself time to think about and prepare for your breakfast. It is a game changer. It's going to wake you up. It's going to give you that energy and the kick in the butt that you'll need, especially on a weekend like this. All right, going into lunch and dinner meals. Again, complex carb, healthy fat, and protein. We want to check all these boxes at each meal. An example of your lunch and your dinners, your complex slow burning carbs, multi-grains, so if you're getting a sandwich, if you're getting, even if it's a burger or a chicken sandwich or something like that, trying to get the complex carb, whole wheats, multi-grains, brown rices, avoid the simples like French fries, like um, fried foods, po' boys, any of that simple white sugars, white breads, all that we want to avoid. Um, healthy fats for lunch and dinner, your avocado, your nuts, your oils, protein, chicken, turkey, seafood, and lean meat. I know, do I sound like a broken wheel? How many times have I told you all this? 
do's and don'ts for your meals. This is the big one. If you've, if you've tuned me out, wake up. Fried food, it's not the time. Save it if you want the French fries, the, the canes, the chicken tenders. Get it on the drive through on Sunday on your way home. Do not eat it this weekend. Do not eat it leading up. You may not notice it. You may not feel it, but I promise you, your body does. And it's going to sit on you. It's going to weigh you down. It's going to make you feel lethargic. And if you don't feel it, imagine how you may feel if you can avoid it completely. The sodas, the soft drinks, avoid them. You don't need those sugars. You don't need the bubbles in your stomach. We want to avoid all that stomach upset. Extra bubbles in the tummy is not going to be a great, a great look before we get into the pool. Dairy, heavy creams, heavy cheeses, um, I know I mentioned the smoothies and the protein shakes. Maybe that's not, maybe we save that for after your swim for like or a snack towards the end of your day. Your events are done and you're still there for the rest of the day. Maybe that's where you have it at lunchtime. It is not the time to order the chicken Alfredo. Um, the really heavy. It's not the time to order the cheese fries, right? We don't want that in the middle of your day. You don't want that the night before you're competing. Um, dessert, same thing. A lot of your desserts, high sugar, obviously. Some of them may be full of dairy. If you're getting a cheesecake or an ice cream or any of those things, save it for Sunday. Save it for the end of the weekend. We don't, we don't want to mess around with it right now. Zach asked, is a baked potato a complex carb or should we avoid it? A regular, a regular white potato is not considered a complex carb, but honestly, I would not mind that for y'all if you're getting that as a side over the weekend. Um, like if you're ordering a meal and the, your side comes with a baked potato, that's honestly going to be better than you ordering the side of French fries or onion rings. Um, so a baked potato is going to be fine. Try not to load it up with a ton of sour cream and cheese. Maybe some cheese, but don't load it up with like all that, all that extra cream and dairy. But honestly, a baked potato, it shouldn't be your meal. It would be a great side. Just try not to, you want to have protein with it. Does that make sense, Zach? Um, a baked potato would be a totally fine side and a great carb, especially for lunchtime, because that's going to be, you're going to use that energy um, later in the afternoon. Nicole? Yeah. Well, um, my belief is that, uh, back on your topic, and I know it's not just a, like kind of a Kaylee moment, but when they're so used to eating fried food or soft drinks or all that stuff, they don't know that they don't feel bad. They just right. feel normal. And that's right. a difference. So even as probably some of them are disagreeing that the fried food and things like that has an impact on them, they just don't know that how to feel differently because that's just totally. what's standard yeah. for so yeah so that's um what i mean by if you don't notice that you're feeling poor with the fried food imagine how much better you would feel if you avoided it you know what i mean so if you're used to having it and you don't feel the difference you're like oh well this isn't really hurting me why can i keep doing this you don't realize it, but if you were to avoid it, how much better you would feel if it was just out completely. You know what I mean? So if you can, if you just make small changes, if you were normally going to order the fried shrimp basket, try to get it fried, I mean, grilled this time. If you were going to get the fried chicken sandwich, try to get it grilled this time. If you were going to get a side of French fries, maybe switch to a side salad or if they have like a side of fruit or some a baked potato just see how that would make you feel you may not notice it but i'm gonna tell you right now it's gonna it's gonna change your energy levels and you will your body's gonna thank you for it did you uh, see uh, kaylee's question because kaylee doesn't know what i think kaylee doesn't really know what food is okay um, kaylee quesadillas <laughs> so um i actually have a slide on mexican food and how what things that you can order at a mexican restaurant but quesadillas they're honestly not going to be the worst case scenario. There are going to be better options for you. Um, if your go-to is a cheese quesadilla, I'm going to ask you to add chicken or shrimp into that quesadilla. Um, if you 
quesadillas are not the worst. I really wouldn't mind the quesadilla. It's not the healthiest option. You could do better with, say, tacos. There's going to be less melted cheese in there. You could do even better with a fajita plate. Okay. Um, I don't think quesadillas are going to be the worst case scenario. I really don't love it because of all the cheese. It's so much cheese. Cheese is really binding to our stomachs. Um, we just don't want all that dairy. Um, maybe check the menu and see if there's something else. If you would maybe try a grilled shrimp taco or a fajita plate and you can make yourself some fajitas. It may be a little bit of a better option just because you can reduce the cheese. And we're going to go into a slide that talks about Mexican food and some of my go-to orders. Do's and don'ts. So I went through the don'ts about the fried food, the soft drinks, the hairy, heavy creams, the dessert. These are some substitutes on how you can get the things that you like, but maybe order them a little different. Again, ask for it grilled. If you're used to that fried chicken sandwich, fried grilled, I mean, fried shrimp or fried chicken, ask for it grilled. See if you can get the alternative. Um, salad, side of veggies, fruit, a baked potato, um, something like that would be a better option than just straight up fries. Save the dessert for later. Y'all are going to work your butt off this weekend. I don't think you should not have dessert and celebrate afterwards, but it's probably not the best idea to have dessert the night before, because even though you may have a bowl of ice cream every night before you go to bed or every night of the week, that's fine. Your body will be really, really, really happy if you do not have it before you swim. Um, Izzy's asking, what about sweet potatoes? I love sweet potatoes. I could turn orange. I eat so many sweet potatoes at home. Um, I'm hoping you mean sweet potatoes versus sweet potato fries. So even if it's a sweet potato and it's still been deep fried, you're still getting all the oils and the trans fats and that's what we're trying to avoid. Um, so while the carb itself is a better option than a white potato, we still want to avoid the fact that it was dropped into a boiling pot of grease and deep fried. So maybe ask for if they have mashed sweet potatoes or if they have a baked sweet potato. If it's, if we can just avoid it going into the vat and the big old pan of boiling oil, Best case scenario. Kaylee, what if you don't eat meat? You don't eat meat at all? No seafood, no shrimp, no chicken, no steak, no pork. Some chickens, great. Find the chicken that works for you. Hopefully it's not always fried. Um, I bet you would like fajita chicken or like shredded chicken at a Mexican restaurant. Shredded chicken is a little bit um, easier for people who don't love meat. Um, it's seasoned really well. And sometimes it's a little bit easier to, to, to get down if you're not a big meat eater. I would still, you still need to get in your meat. If you don't eat meat, then you need to be supplementing with smoothies and protein shakes. You need to be getting that protein in some way. Okay. So far so good. Let's go into restaurants. Now that we're talking about menu orders, I was told that there's an Italian restaurant um, that some of y'all like or your parents like to go to in the area. So Italian options that are going to be great for y'all. I love pizza. Um, pizza can sometimes get a bad rap, but it's not the worst case scenario. Again, we want, we prefer the complex carbs, but you're not getting a ton of carbs. You're not getting like a, a, a huge, old, a lot of carbs or starches in that pizza. We want to avoid too many salty meats. So maybe don't get the meat or deluxe pizza. Maybe try to get maybe pepperoni and then load up on a bunch of veggies or get the veggie and add some chicken to your pizza. Um, don't get the Alfredo based pizza. But pizza is really not the worst case scenario when you're at an Italian restaurant. Um, 
the really, really oily and greasy ones can be. Um, but you can really, you can load up with a bunch of veggies. If you're going to get pizza, I always suggest getting a big salad as well. So that way you're making sure you're getting, you're checking that whole nutritional box. We want to, you want to look at your diet and your nutrition as checking your boxes. We've talked about your protein. We've talked about making sure you're getting enough of your veggies. You want to eliminate those fried foods and the really high sodium things. So pizza is not terrible. Just make sure you're getting maybe a big green salad with it. Um, pastas. Pasta tends to be, if you've heard the thing, marathon runners always like to have their carbs and their pasta before a big race. So like a big me, if you feel like you need to eat your pasta beforehand. Pasta is fine, but we want to make sure it's not dripping in a cream sauce. So if you're used to getting Alfredo, maybe switch it to a red sauce. Um, the cream again, causes a lot of inflammation. You may not feel it. Your body feels it. And you're just not in tune with feeling it and knowing the changes that's making that's happening in, in your system. Dairy is really, really inflammatory. So if you wake up and you're a little achy or a little sore, having that added cream is not doing you any favor. So if you like Alfredo, this is not the weekend to have it. Again, save it for after. Um, if you're getting pasta, make sure you get a protein in there. Don't just get pasta and sauce. Add your chicken, add your meat, get something on the side or on top. Salad, like I said, it's a great way to get in your veggies. You can get in some healthy fats with an oil dressing. Um, avoid the heavy cheeses. Avoid those heavy creams. Mexican, like I mentioned when hey, uh, Kaylee was asking about the quesadillas, tacos, nothing fried, guys. I'm going to tell you all that the rest of tonight. No fried foods. When we're away, it's really easy to run through a drive through at lunch. It's really easy to order the chicken tender basket. Those things are really easy. Really make it a conscious effort this weekend to avoid it. It's for a few days. You will feel better. It that added fat and that added oil sits really heavy in your stomach. Again, you may not be totally aware of it, but it causes such weight in our stomach and in our bodies. It causes this really heavy feeling. Again, you may not notice it, but I'm telling you what it does inside your body. It causes fatigue, drowsiness, heaviness. You will not perform at your highest potential if you've had chicken tenders and french fries the night before. It's just facts. Um, fajitas is going to be the best way you can order at a Mexican restaurant. Again, it checks all your boxes. You get some tortillas, your, your starch, you get a plate load of veggies and your, your protein. Sometimes you can get all three, you get a steak, a chicken, and a shrimp. Skip the queso. Something just like the fried food, we want to avoid all those heavy creams. Again, the dairy is really inflammatory, just like the fried food. Stick to your salsa and your guac. I go to Mexican food because I like the chips and salsa, but we really want to avoid the queso. We don't need all that dairy sticking to our insides. Um, the guacamole is going to have a great healthy fat there for you. Um, Kaylee, what if the chicken's mushy? I can't help you if the chicken's mushy. My chicken's not mushy. Usually when I order chicken, it's not very mushy. Um, order your chicken. Can I have the chicken not mushy, please? Sorry, Kaylee. Okay, competition. Again, if you've tuned me out, perk back up. Pool rules. One, pack a lot of snacks. I've been told that this is a very, very long day for y'all. You will have several hours between events. You will have several hours between one meal to the next. You want to make sure you have lots of snacks in your bag, whether that is on you on the pool deck, whether that is in an ice chest in your parents' car. Um, we want all the snacks. Avoid the concession stand temptations. I love a concession stand just like the rest of us. We want the nachos. We want the cookies. 
the Sour Patch Kids. We want all those things. And those things all sound great. I can promise you your body and your stomach do not want that sitting in you before you jump into the water. Bad move, bad look. You will not feel your best. And you may not notice this because maybe you're used to eating a pack of M&Ms every Tuesday before you get in the pool. Please, just for me. So we can talk in the month and you can say, Nicole, I didn't eat the M&Ms today and I felt better. Or tell me otherwise, but at least try it. Do me that solid and try it. But let's avoid the concession stand by packing all of our snacks. Whether that means you pack them from the house like we talked about in the first couple of slides, whether that means once you guys get into sulfur this week, I think Thursday, y'all get there, um, go to the store. Get there and allow yourself some time after you've checked in, before, whenever the next time the team meets together, give yourself with your parents, whoever's bringing you time to go to the store, organize your snacks. I've told y'all this the past couple of weeks that we've, or months that we've had these chats. It may take y'all a little bit more involvement, a little bit more engagement and giving some input as to what you need to have in your bags. So getting to the store so we don't have to go and hit the concession stand. No candy and cookies. We don't want those added sugars. We don't want that peak. We don't want that crash. We don't want the jitters. We don't need it. Not the time. Pack an ice chest for the car. Some of your snacks don't say, well, this is my go-to snack, but it has to be refrigerated. So I can't bring it with me. Eh, pack an ice chest. Pack your hydration, pack your supplements. If you, you need your hydration, right? We just talked about you need one ounce per your body weight. So whatever your weight is, that's how many ounces you need. I promise you it's not gonna fit in one water bottle. So we need more. And if there isn't, I'm sure there are somewhere at the pool for you to refill. But if there isn't, you've gotta make sure you've got all that water with you. If you're used to taking in a BCAA supplement, if you're used to taking in an additional hydration supplement, like a noon or um, the liquid IV or something additional, Make sure it's with you. Make sure it's in your bag and you have it with you. No caffeine. I repeat, no caffeine. We don't need it. It's not the time. If you're used to getting your Starbucks uh, during the week, don't do it this weekend. We don't need it. You don't need the jitters. You don't need the crash and the peak and the ups and the downs. You don't need that stomach, that GI, that gut inflammation it's you just it's it's dicey you don't it's it's dicey you don't want to deal with it this weekend I promise it's not worth it all right moving on snacks we've talked a lot about snacks and I feel like we oh I always get the question well where do some snacks do these snacks work can I have this can I have that so I made a list of some of my go-to snacks that I think would be really easy for you to throw into a bag and have on hand or to make in advance. Pretzels, easy, super easy. They're not going to have, they're not, they're going to be baked. They're not going to be fried. Um, you don't need to get them with all this extra seasoning and salts, but it's a great snack. Bananas, apples, and grapes. I say those three because they're usually the easiest. Some berries tend to get mushy when they're sitting in a bag. Bananas are protected. Apples are protected. Grapes are easy to throw in a bag. Those are going to be some great snacks to have on hand. They travel really well. Trail mix, super easy. You can get dried fruit. You can get mix, any kind of mix that you like. Sadie, yes, ma'am. Almond butter filled pretzels are great. I love the, y'all know how I feel about peanut butter. Peanut butter filled, any kind of nut butter filled pretzels. Beautiful, love it. Perfect snack. You can get them almost anywhere. Love them. Perfect snack for y'all to have in your bag. Um, protein shakes, again, because they tend to be kind of milky, this is totally on you and what your body can handle before getting in and out of the water. Me, for example, I don't love a protein shake before I work out or before I go expend a bunch of energy. I like it post, but maybe you finish up your events earlier than some of your friends and you need a snack. And if you're done, protein shakes are great. Some of you may drink a protein shake and you're ready to roll and get in the pool and it's no big deal. Protein shakes are fabulous. Just be mindful of the timing of it and what your body responds to. Um, granola, 
bars, protein bars. Um, Y'all know how I feel about a lot of these bars, but I've given you some of the brands that I like. RX, the perfect bar. Barbells are at Trader Joe's. So if any of y'all across the lake or New Orleans, stop at a Trader Joe's and make a little grocery trip before y'all head out this weekend. The barbells, I don't mind. They're good in a pinch. So those are some of the brands that I like if you need to throw a bar in your bag. Remember how I feel about the Cliff Bars. You might as well throw a Snickers in that bag. Um, peanut butter and jelly sandwich. If you want a sandwich, if you find that you are um, hungrier than most and you know that pretzels are not going to hold you over and a banana is not going to hold you over, and you need something a little bit beefier. Guys, some of y'all need maybe need a little bit more. Um, peanut butter and jelly sandwich is perfect. Um, the jelly is a fast, it's a simple carb. It's a sugar. You can usually find jellies at the store that have no added sugar. Um, but those are going to be fast acting sugars that you're going to use as energy quickly. So that's totally okay. A turkey sandwich, turkey and cheese sandwich. That's totally fine. Sandwich crackers, um, like the peanut butter and the whole grain, multi-grain, you know what I'm talking about? They come in a sleeve of like six crackers. Those are fine, similar to like the almond filled pretzels. Sandwich crackers are great. I've given y'all two of my go-to recipes. I've posted them on the website. We've talked about them, the peanut butter energy balls. You can make with almond butter too, if you like, or the protein muffins, protein pancakes with the Kodiak mix and a protein shake. Again, make them this week have them ready to roll. Um, so those are my, those are, that's, if you guys are just lost and you don't know, because I told you no Sour Patch Kids and that's usually your go-to snack and we're going to try to not have the Sour Patch Kids this week. Here's your list. Try something new. Let's go a little bit healthier. No excuses. Okay. Now it's your turn. Let's chat. Who has had something that has worked this year, has not worked this year? Who's got more questions? I know I've answered a couple of sprinkled in questions along the way, but if y'all have more, now's your time. Anybody? Zach? Kaylee? Anybody? Anybody? Ross, do you have any questions or anything you want to poke and prod into? Kendall? Who else? Let me go through the list. Let me just start calling people out, guys. I'm not afraid. Oh, did you say yogurt was good? Yes, 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 yes. 150%. Yes, yogurt is great. I love, um, a lot of people recently have been asking me about these Chobani flips. Those are not my jam. Those are really, really high in sugar. It's just like candy in a yogurt form. Um, there are a couple of brands that I like. I love the um, Waco's Triple Zero. Um, ratio is a good one. Too good is a, is a good one. Um, yogurt with granola is awesome. You can do granola, you can do, um, um, berries, fresh fruit, make yourself a little, excuse me, parfait. Um, love yogurt. That's gonna be a great breakfast. It's gonna be a great snack. Love it. Abby, what are good bars without nuts? Um, bars without nuts. I don't think those barbells have nuts. Um, check the perfect bar. Um, I know there's a peanut butter one, but I don't think they're all nuts. Um, again, check the RX. The RX bars will have all of the ingredients listed in like bold white font on the front of their bar. Um, we want to avoid the kind bars. Um, I know everyone really likes those, but those are loaded obviously with almonds and cashews. 
But those three brands that I listed in this slide, I don't know that all of them have nuts. I'm sure some of the flavors will have nuts in them, but not all of them. Are Chobani shakes good? You know what, Isabella? I'm not sure. Um, I don't know that I've ever looked at one, but I know that the Chobani brand can be really sneaky about added sugars. So guys, we've I've showed you all the label before, but just so you can can know. And if you go to the store or you can look it up, or you can Google it online. Um, Isabella, if you were to Google Chobani shakes, you can probably find a link that says nutrition facts. Towards the bottom of that list, there's going to be a line that says sugars and added sugars. You want it to be under 10 grams of added sugars. So just check that for the Chobani shakes. I don't know off the top of my head, but I do know that the Chobani brand is typically high in added sugars. Again, remember we've talked about added sugars versus total sugars. The total sugars is gonna include everything that's in that, that item. The added sugars are gonna be all those fake ones. So if it says total 10 grams, but it says only added one, Nine of those grams came from a natural source, like a honey, a fruit, something like that. And so that's not totally terrible. Uh, it's those added sugars we really want to avoid. So if you look at that Chobani shake and it says 17 grams of added sugars, put it back. We don't want it. Uh, okay, Kaylee, back to, what did you say? Craft, hold on, it's not showing up right in the openness. Okay. Craft mac and cheese cup, negative Ghost Rider. No, I don't love the craft mac and cheese cups. We can do better. Um, it's not even real cheese, unfortunately. I know how much we love the blue label. Um, mac and cheese doesn't have real cheese, I don't think, especially craft. So let's avoid that. Peanut butter crackers, uh, yeah, Sadie. The Ritz ones, those are gonna be fine. Again, especially if it's for something that's like you're having on the pool deck, totally. Um, where on the website can we find the recipe for the protein balls? Um, if you go to Coach's Corner, under that tab, there's going to be a nutrition tab. And then there's going to be a bunch of random things that I've posted over the past couple of months. Also, if you go to the, I believe I've posted it on the New Wave um, Instagram. You can scroll through the Instagram page. I think I've also posted that as a, as a, the slide on as a Tuesday tip. I think I've posted that recipe there as well, Julian. Would drinking a lot of milk affect their performance or endurance? Um, I don't suggest a ton of milk just because of the inflammatory properties that milk can have. Um, drinking a little bit of milk is fine. It's totally fine. I don't, milk and dairy is really subjective to our stomachs personally. Some people can drink it, some people can't. Some people have an OTK time with liquid dairy versus hard like cheese cheeses. Um, it doesn't go towards your hydration count. I, I would make sure there's plenty of water in there. Um, just be mindful of having it maybe right before getting in the pool. Chocolate milk can be good. Um, again, the thought behind chocolate milk being good for athletes is a post-workout drink similar to a protein shake. So the in milk, like a, like a chocolate milk, so like in a milk, any milk um, from a cow, that, that dairy, there are protein enzymes and there are specific dairy proteins that come from bovine, which is again, like I'm sure y'all have seen whey protein that comes in supplement form. So cow's milk is bovine, which is whey. Um, that is where they're coming from with this chocolate milk being good for athletes for a post-workout or a post-race or something like that because of the protein content. Again, milk isn't, I don't boost or promote a ton of milk. Um, it's really subjective to how your body digests milk and digests dairy and those 
milk and dairy enzymes. Um, but it is, it can cause inflammation. So that's why I don't suggest these heavy cheeses and heavy cream sauces because of the way those are pasteurized and the way those are um, created. It, it doesn't, it kind of can wreak some havoc on your digestion system. Good questions, guys. I was like, fire around. Anybody else? Welcome. Anyone? Anybody have any um, feedback from when we went to Auburn a couple weeks ago? Did, did you guys pack anything? Did you notice any snack and performance results? Did anybody hit the concession stand and feel kind of cruddy afterward? Or feel like you ordered something grilled? Zach says, I got really good snacks. Awesome. That's great. Did you find, did you kind of plan ahead more than you had in the past? Cool. Love it. Great job. That's really exciting. Don't just let it, don't expect it's going to show up there for you guys. Take a little bit of action and responsibility. Anyone else? Sound good? How about Gatorade? Gatorade's fine. Um, Gatorade Zero is preferred for um, like normal day-to-day. -day. Gatorade straight up um, just has a little bit more sugar. But again, those are the, the added sugars on the pool deck in a supplement like a Gatorade, like a hydration, is going to be beneficial because of the it's going to be used quickly. So going back to that analogy of the twig on the fire versus the log on the fire, um, you don't need those simple sugars like me sitting here right now. I don't need a Gatorade. Um, I would prefer a Gatorade Zero if I needed those electrolytes. Um, but on the pool deck, before they go swim, those simple, fast-acting added sugars in a hydration supplement, guys, listen up. A hydration supplement that has added sugars is okay. Sour Patch Kids are not. There is a difference. Those added sugars are different. If you were to flip over your liquid IV, there's going to be a lot of added sugars in there. Electrolytes, fast acting sugars for endurance is going to be different than a pack of candy and a pack of Skittles and something like that. So something like a Gatorade is going to be fine if you're going to be using it for hydration for your event. Welcome. How are we doing? Sound good? Y'all fired up? Cool. Yeah, he is. Zach's excited. Last what? Maybe that was an accident. All right, guys. Yep. No I one's eating too much king cake, right? What's that, Ross? I think we're good. Yeah, they just gotta cool. hold it together. We've got a lot of the ones on on the call leave Thursday, Friday, something like that. Then there's another group that leaves next week. So they've got what they need. Sweet. Take advantage, guys. Cool. All right. I think we're good. 
All right, guys. Well, good luck. Good talk. Thanks for all the questions. This was good.